Good morning. Uh, we look today at chapter 5 of the Gospel of John, combining yesterday and today's readings again as I normally do on a Monday morning. Um, and in, in chapter 5, as I've read it different places, uh, I noticed that in this Bible I have in my, in my wood shop, uh, verse 2 ends with, you know, many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. And then, that's, and then it goes right to verse 5. It skips verses 3 and 4. And, and, and some Bibles do that. They have, and so in this Bible it says, some later uh, manuscripts add, um, you know, and then they add verses 3 and 4 in there. But this starts out that, you know, so it's after the festival of the Jews, or if there was another festival of the Jews, after the Passover that Jesus had been there. I mean, they had several festivals th throughout the year that, um, that they could go to Jerusalem for to observe or, you know, observe in their own home um, areas. But uh, the Passover was one that they tried to go to Jerusalem for. But anyway, uh, there's another festival. And Jesus, again, goes to Jerusalem. And it says, by the sheep gate. And I think that's interesting, by the sheep gate. Well, is there a cattle gate and a camel gate and, a, you know, gates for all these other things? I mean, I don't know. It's just one of those things I wonder because it's specified by the sheep gate. There's a pool called in Hebrew, this version says Bethzatha. Some of them say by the pool of Bethesda. I mean, there's there are different words that might describe this pool anyway, with five porticos, five different levels of, of places where people would sit and rest or relay or whatever that way. And, and all these people, uh, you know the story, I would guess, uh, you know, they're there because uh, the... Belief is that when the waters were stirred, the waters would bubble and roil and move around. It was an angel who was stirring the waters. And the first person then to get into the water would be healed. And that's, that's what's missing in verses 3 and 4 in, in this Bible. It says that uh, other ancient authorities add this for verse 3 and 4. Waiting for the stirring of water, for an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred the water. Whoever stepped in after... First, after the stirring of the water was made well from whatever disease this person suffered. And so think about that. These, these people, they're paralyzed, they're blind, they're lame, they're, you know, whatever. They've got a, something wrong with them that, that the doctors can't cure. And this particular man that Jesus talks to, that John tells us about, has for 38 years, been ill for 38 years. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it's... It's a reminder to uh, for us that you know, time has no meaning for Jesus, for God. You know, this man has been ill 38 years. He could heal just as easily as someone who had just come down with a cold that morning or, um, you know, whatever it happened. I mean, the, like the woman who had had a hemorrhage for 12 years, you know, he healed. I mean, it's just 38 years this person had been there hoping, hoping to be the first to get into the pool. And Jesus questioned to him, you know, Jesus sees him, and he says he knew he'd been there, and he says, do you want to be healed? Well, we may think that's a pretty stupid question. Do you want to be healed? You know, not everybody wants to be healed. I mean, I, I you know, we, we all are aware of someone that we would say is, um, you know, faking their injury or taking advantage of something that maybe isn't quite as serious as they make it out to be. But Jesus asks this person, do you want to be healed? Do you want your illness gone? You've been here for, you've been ill for 38 years. It doesn't say if he's been there at this pool for that whole 38 years, but do you want to be made well? Do you want to have a full and rich life? Do you want to be able to work? Do you want to be able to, you know, carry on a normal life and Seems like a stupid question, but you know, and the man, the man, the man doesn't say yes. I, I do. He says, I, I don't have anybody here to help me get into the pool when it gets stirred. So, you know, by the time I can get there on my own, somebody else has already beat me to it. He says, I don't have anyone to help me. And Jesus is the help that he needs, right? Because Jesus says to this man doesn't reach out and touch him, doesn't do any of those things. He just simply says, stand up, take your mat, and walk. And at once, it says, the man was made well. Just Jesus' words, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. 
You know, there, it's just amazing, the power of the word, the spoken word of God. And I think about that spoken word, you know, that Jesus speaks that way, and of how you and I speak the word to others that we encounter, um, and to our family, to, to all of those people. We, we speak the word of God just by the way we act, by the way we carry ourselves, by the way we show our love and our grace, hopefully, we, we do that. But, you know, this man was made well, and he picked up his mat and began to walk. And of course, what day of the week is it? It's the Sabbath again. You know that, right? And of course, this man is walking, carrying his, his bed, you know, his pallet, whatever you want to call it. And he gets scolded by some of the Jewish religious leaders. You can't do that. That's working, you know, to carry your, your pallet, I mean, I wouldn't think it would be anything very big and fancy, but the man was working on the Sabbath, and, and they, they, they called him out on that. And, and he says, but the man who made me well told me to do this. You know, and in, in some ways it's, you know, is he trying to pass the buck? Is he, or, you know, but he does say, the man who made me well. He, I mean, he, he admits that someone, or he testifies, maybe I should say, that someone healed him, you know, and... And of course, I would guess that these these Jews, I mean, that that John mentions, have an idea of who it is that may have healed him, and they ask, "Well, who is this guy that did that?" And and he, you know, who who told you to pick up your mallet and pallet and walk? And it says in verse thirteen, now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. You know, I mean, Jesus did this for that man just said, rise, take up your pellet and walk, and went on his way. He didn't introduce himself. He didn't do any more. He, he didn't make a big scene of it. He just, rather than call attention to himself, he disappeared into the crowd that was there. And, that, you know, it makes me kind of wonder a little bit, you know, why doesn't Jesus just take time to heal all of those? And, and I, you know, I, I kind of, I come to the conclusion that you know, he healed the one for the power and the glory of God to be shown to the world. I mean, he could have just as easily healed all of them of their infirmities there. But he healed this man, and I think, and I think part of it is that this man then could be a witness. This man could share with others. And again, it says in verse 14, later Jesus saw this man in the temple and talked to him. And then, it was then that this man learned who Jesus was. And he went and he told these, the Jews, you know, the, the Pharisees, the leaders, whatever you want to call them. And he told them that it was Jesus. It was Jesus of Nazareth that healed me. It was that man, you know. And, and that starts again to set these Jewish leaders against Jesus. It says, they began to persecute him because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. And Jesus answered to them, I, I love this, my father is still working, so, and I am also working. Think about that. Jesus says to these people, you know, years after creation, I mean, my father is still working. Do we think about that today? Do we think about God being at work in the world? Do we think that God is still working? I mean, that's an interesting Interesting thing to consider. Do we think that God is still working? Or do we acknowledge that God is still working? You know, and, and um, I mean, you know, we'll have people, they'll ask us to pray for certain people, and then they'll say, thank you for the prayers. And, and you know, and, and they acknowledge the power of prayer. And so, yes, we acknowledge that God is working in and through the world that way. And... And then uh, as we go on, I've spent most of my time on this story already, and that's okay. Uh, but Jesus says, The Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. And whatever, and, and whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. And I think about that w with us in our world today as well. You know, uh, boys and girls watch their moms and dads, their grandpas and grandmas, and they learn an awful lot by, by watching, by listening, by seeing what's going on, by observing how the, the adults around them 
um, have compassion for others or maybe gossip about others or, you know, they say, well, what the father does and says, the little boy will learn. And, and there's a, a saying that, you know, the dad says to his little boy, you know, be careful where you walk. And the little boy says to his dad, you be careful where you walk because I walk in your footprints. You know, I mean, this is, this is the truth. You know, we see, we see what our parents are doing. We see what our other church people are doing. We see what other people in our community are doing. We see what our friends are doing. And, and we're very apt, very much what, to do the same. But Jesus says, you know, my father is still working, so I must be working as well. And then he goes on and he talks about, you know, that, that God gave the right of judgment to the Son, to Jesus Christ. And, um, and he says, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes in me has eternal life. And this is, this is the, the thing that we, that we believe and we trust and we teach, that in believing in Jesus, we have eternal life. Um, and, and if we believe in Jesus, he says, and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death into life. You know, it, and, and he says in verse 30, I can do nothing on my own as I hear I judge. So it, you know, my father is, is working in me. You know, Jesus, Jesus acknowledges God continually in his life and in his works on the world. He says, the, father, the works that my father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the father has sent me. These, these Jewish leaders, the, the people wanted proof somehow they wanted somebody other than Jesus to testify that he was the son of God that he is the son of God and and who could who could do that I mean who who on this earth at that point in time had the ability not the ability but the who would they believe who would they believe maybe that's the way to say it who would they believe I mean would they believe his disciples well, no, because Jesus could have brainwashed them or something, you know. But, you know, Jesus says, my deeds, my actions, my works testify to who I am. I couldn't do this if I wasn't the Son of God, you know. And, and I think that we re need to remember that today, that Jesus can do all things. And that Jesus' works, Jesus' teachings testify that he is the Son of God. May you live and believe that every day of your life, that Jesus is the Son of God, our Savior.